For those who aren't old enough to remember the before times, the long, long ago, aka before the internet, it used to be that when two people would argue about something vitally important like uh, which band sang a particular hit from the 1980s, they would have to settle it by asking a third party, dusting off a tome of knowledge delivered straight to their door by a handy dandy salesman, or by simply assuming their friend was wrong as always. Nowadays, if we need to know something quickly, we take it for granted that we can can bing it and find an answer almost immediately. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't keep a straight face there. We take for granted that we can Google it and find an answer almost immediately. But what even many of our us technophiles forget is that the internet didn't magically bring with it the ability to find anything in this giant computer network and that early netizens were basically limited to browsing websites they already knew how to access or were able to guess. That is until some clever programmers decided that information on the internet would be much more useful if it were made readily available to people and so the concept of the modern day search engine was born. The first generations of search engines were a bit cruder than those that we use today and mostly consisted of simple website listings with little to no information beyond their basic titles. But as the information superhighway began to fill with more and more traffic, it quickly became clear that websites would need to be tracked using a slew of methods beyond titles. So, bot programs known as web crawlers or spiders were created to automatically scan websites for links and content information such as keywords, titles, synonyms, access frequency, relevancy, rating, authenticity, credibility, spam content, etc. to be cocooned neatly in a little web of indexes for users to access by way of a search bar. But if all it took to create a successful search engine was throwing more stuff into a big database, then we might still be asking Jeeves for things. No, the programmers and mathematicians who work for top modern search providers are constantly devising ways that they can use algorithms to find the most important pieces of data that are related to a user's search. Let's say Linus Tech Tips. So they deliver a bunch of links to that website in a top-down fashion as opposed to technology tips about lions or something, but even that is not enough anymore. And the best search engines even use database information they've collected about their users to help deliver better, more tailored results. And while that level of attentiveness is useful in minimizing daily hassles such as search times, we have to decide at some point if a corporation knowing we meant Apple and not Apple is more important than the privacy that we give up. Because as many have already realized, it's no coincidence that the advertisements on every page we visit feature the specific new game or PC part that we've been drooling over for some time, which... Ooh, well, um... Hmm, this is awkward. Well, which normally <coughs> contains the whatever it is you've been drooling over for some time. And this entices advertisers into purchasing ad space that directly targets users who are interested in their products or services at a premium, even though in this case it clearly misfired. Something that helps them charge more for the ads, since the theory does actually work in practice and targeted ads have become so commonplace that from my experience, Folks are now not only more likely to click them, but even get bothered when they see non-targeted, irrelevant website ads. Go figure. Speaking of ads, here's one now that I think will be relevant to many of you. Lynda.com. With a Lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts who are passionate about teaching, stream thousands of video courses on demand so you can learn at your own schedule instead of at your own schedule, on your own schedule, at your own pace instead of being driven by some arbitrary timeline. You can browse every course's transcript to follow along. You can download tutorials and watch them on the go, including access on iOS and your Android devices. That's actually a relatively new thing. You can save playlists and, I mean, what can you even learn, Linus? Good question. You can learn digital photography. You can learn Photoshop. You can learn programs like Microsoft Office. You can learn business skills. There's all kinds of great stuff on there and your lynda.com membership will give you unlimited access to training on hundreds of these topics, all for a flat rate starting at just 25 bucks a month. And the best part is that it's actually free to try. Just head over to lynda.com slash techquickie and get a 10-day trial for free to decide if you'd like it or not. 
Thanks for watching, guys. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it just played sucked. As always, leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fastest Possibles. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this one.